50 Security Evaluation Methodologies. I'm Jeremy Clark. I'll be your professor uh, for this course. Uh, I'm at Concordia in CISE. I do a lot of work on uh, security as well as cryptography, and I work a lot on Bitcoin and blockchain uh, now. Now, there's a chance that you're watching this video and you're not actually enrolled in the course. You're just watching it because it's on YouTube. If that's the case, you know, I'm really glad that, that you're taking the time out to watch this and you can just skip ahead to lecture one. Uh, the rest of this lecture is just going to be the logistical details for all of you that are watching this that are actually enrolled in the summer one uh, 2020 uh, offering of this course. OK, so uh, if you want to find me, uh, you can just Google me. And uh, I should come up even if you don't spell it right. And uh, from my website, uh, you can find a, a tab with courses and uh, the uh, there's a link uh, to the course website. Now the course website this year will be on Moodle. Uh, so I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, in, in the past years, I just maintain an actual website itself. Uh, and so for the website itself, uh, you can always look at last year's uh, website and it has almost all of the same material. Uh, so for, if for some reason you can't get into Moodle uh, temporarily, this is a, a place that you can look uh, until you get access to the actual uh, course content, uh, which is on Moodle. Okay, uh, now with uh, Moodle itself, uh, if you don't have access, there's probably one of two reasons. Uh, it could be that you're at Concordia and you just weren't auto-enrolled uh, into Moodle. Uh, if that's the case, shoot me an email and I'll add you manually. Uh, the other reason that you're not uh, on Moodle is, is maybe you're taking this course from a different university. Uh, in that case, uh, first off, you can't actually register in the course until the drop deadline, which is next Monday. Uh, and so you'll have to uh, just watch the lectures through YouTube or, or finding it uh, on my course website for now. Uh, and uh, then after the drop deadline, if you're able to register in the course, and I should note that I have no control over that. It's not in my hands at all. It's completely up to the department itself. Uh, but if you are able to enroll after that, uh, then you can send me an email and I'll, I'll look into how I add you on Moodle. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but we'll figure that out. Okay, so assuming that you can get onto Moodle itself, uh, then, uh, then you'll see basically uh, all the course materials uh, that are here. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll, let me talk about the lectures first and then I'll, I'll go through the course outline and this marking grade, the grading scheme and, and all of that kind of stuff. So with the lectures themselves, what the lectures are, are this year, they're actually a recording of the lecture that I gave last year. So I cut out like the, the start and the end where we, we just sort of talk about logistical things, but the actual content of the course I recorded as a video uh, you'll see that, that when I give the lectures, I just write out uh, the notes by hand. And so you'll have a copy of a PDF of the notes. And then when you watch the video, you'll, you'll see me writing them and explaining uh, everything uh, as we go along. Okay. Uh, and so because this course is, is fully online, uh, it seems, you know, it was just, it was easy to offer this course. This course isn't usually offered uh, in the summer, uh, but because these lectures were already recorded, uh, it was it was an easy decision to just offer it for you uh, to take online. Uh, now the the fact that they're pre-recorded lectures, uh, I think are mainly beneficial. Uh, the The main benefit is you can watch them anytime. Uh, you could do the whole course this week if you if you really wanted to. okay? Everything's there. You know exactly what's there. It's not going to change uh, and it's it's there today. Uh, so you can watch the entire course. There are a few drawbacks. So the, actually, there's only one drawback that I can think of, uh, which is because the course is taught, uh, the recordings are of a course that were taught to a live audience, uh, the students who were in the course last year, they sometimes ask questions and you can't hear it. And I understand that you can't hear the questions. And so I'm hoping from the context of my answers, you'll kind of infer what the question is. But I, I really want to emphasize that I'm not, I'm not going to test you on whether you heard what the question was or, or anything like that. So just follow along with the content. I know it's kind of annoying that, that there are these questions and you're kind of straining to hear them and, and you can't hear them very well, if at all. Uh, so, you know, I apologize for that a little annoying bit of, of watching pre-recorded lectures, 
uh, but I won't test you on it. And I think the benefits of having the entire course in the bag already and, and being able to offer this to you very quickly in an online setting and then also allow, allowing you to, to sort of go through the material at your own pace, uh, whether it's faster or slower uh, than the lectures are, are being released. I, th I think those are all benefits. Okay, so I'm, I'm hoping that the, the course goes well, uh, even with that, that one small hiccup. Okay, uh, in terms of lectures, uh, uh, so, so as I noted, the, 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 I don't use slides. I, I handwrite everything out. Uh, that tends to make me slow down and make sure that I explain things uh, in, a, in a way that's simple enough that I can write it and I'm going at a pace uh, where I can write it and I don't blow through like 10 slides really fast without the, with the whole class getting lost. Uh, so, so that's not what I want. Um, so that's why I do the handwritten notes. Uh, also, there are components of this course where, uh, for example, later we talk a bit about browser security. So I might switch over to the browser and show you, you know, actual things in the browser. Or at a certain point, we do a usability study of, of some software. So you'll see that I open the software up and you'll be able to follow along uh, with that. But most of the contents uh, is just in the notes themselves. Uh, the number of lectures are uh, is 12. Uh, so there, there is room for 13 lectures in a course, but anyways, we'll, we'll just do uh, 12. I think that's, that's lots of content uh, for, for this course. And um, there is one lecture, uh, lecture number four, where the audio was, was really low because of a glitch. And uh, as a result, I'll try to re-record that lecture. So I'll, I'll just give a straight lecture without an audience uh, for lecture four. The content will be the same. So if you want to watch lecture four before I have a chance to re-record it, that's fine. Uh, I won't say anything new, I don't think, in, in the re-recorded version. But for those of you who uh, can't hear uh, because of the low audio, uh, I, I will re-record that, that particular lecture. Okay, uh, let me then jump over to the course outline, uh, which you can find at the top of the Moodle page. Uh, so uh, you have my email address. Uh, I have, uh, so this year we'll have to do virtual office hours. Uh, and so this is how it's going to work. Uh, every Wednesday we would normally have class, but because the classes are already recorded, uh, then we can free up that in class time to do something else. Uh, so you can watch the lectures whenever you want. And so I know that you all have a free slot in your schedule for this course on Wednesdays. The course starts, I think at 2.45, but, but we'll just round it up to three. Uh, so at three o'clock, uh, I'll go on Zoom and uh, we'll have like a live office hours. I'll put the link uh, to the Zoom on Moodle. Uh, the office hours won't start, you know, today, the day that you're watching this lecture, they're going to start next week. Um, unlike office hours where normally you line up at the door and I see you one on one and we have a private conversation uh, that, that, that other people don't hear. This is more like a group uh, office hour. Uh, and so everyone who's on the office hour will hear your question. Um, so this will work very well for questions that you have about the material of the course. If you don't understand things or you want me to re-explain things, you don't have a chance to ask me uh, during the lecture. Uh, and so as a result, uh, we can use the Zoom uh, call for, for uh, question and answer and, and that kind of thing. Uh, that said, if you have something private that you want to discuss with me, like personal circumstances or something specific about your grading or, uh, you know, what, whatever the case may be, uh, for those cases, let's try and do it over email. So just shoot me an email. And uh, I think a lot of those kinds of issues uh, we can resolve just by going back and forth over email. If there's ever a need to do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, personal call, uh, we can always set that up. But I'll try and handle it by email. Uh, there's a lot of you that are enrolled in this course. I think it's currently, it's at its cap, which is 80. And, and after uh, the drop deadline, they might add lots more people. And so uh, unfortunately, I just can't do a sort of traditional office hour where, where we meet one-on-one. -on -one. And so this is uh, how we'll handle that. Okay, uh, what's next? Um, so the course is completely online. We're assuming that you have the ability to take the course uh, in terms of a computer and, and internet. I think a lot of you, probably very few of you are brand new students. Uh, a lot of you have taken courses uh, in the last term and so you sort of know what the process is and, and you know that uh, CIC makes available computing equipment and 
uh, sticks uh, that you can plug in, like USB sticks that give you access to the internet through the cellular network. Uh, and so those, those resources are available to you if, if you need them uh, in order to complete uh, this course. Okay, uh, the description is here. You, you also have all the lectures and all the notes. So if, if you wanna see what the course is about, you can actually just jump in and start watching some of the lectures. Um, uh, in terms of textbooks, there's no required textbook. Um, the course jumps around quite a bit, so there's a lot of different topics. And usually, actually, the way I designed the course was I would actually read an entire textbook, and then I would only do two lectures based on that textbook. And then we would do another topic, and there would be a whole textbook for that topic, but we only do two lectures on it. And so it doesn't make sense to have you read five or six textbooks. No one has time for that. Um, and so all the material, all, everything that you'll be tested on is just in the lecture notes themselves. Uh, or in, sorry, I should say in the lectures themselves. So sometimes I say stuff in the lectures, but I don't necessarily write it down. So you are responsible for everything that's said in the lecture. Uh, everything I say, it, once again, if, if a student says it and you can't hear it, that's not, I'm not gonna test you on that, but you're, you're, you're tested on everything that I say uh, in the lectures itself. Um, there's also uh, some, uh, so there are some textbooks that I link to that are completely optional. And sometimes there's like papers, or articles or videos or things like that. And so you can find those under additional materials uh, for each of the lectures. And uh, you can look at these. If you don't wanna look at them at all, that's fine. If you're really interested in it, maybe you wanna do a project that, that sort of piggybacks on one of these lectures, then you might find that these materials are helpful. Uh, if you feel like you don't have the background uh, for the course and you wanna you, you want to get some more knowledge and you, you're not quite following the lecture, then you might look at these additional materials uh, as well. Um, so, so they're there, they're completely optional. Uh, and th uh, there's, there's some videos as well. The videos are actually part of the lectures. It's just that the audio is not the greatest. And so if you want to just watch the video, the, the video directly instead of trying to watch it through the lecture, then uh, for, there's only two video clips in the whole course, but, but anyways, the videos are there as well. Um, uh, let, let me back up. So that reminded me, uh, th there is one thing uh, about prerequisites I wanted to say. So this course doesn't have any formal prerequisites. Uh, and like I said, the textbooks are there. If, if you feel like you're missing some background knowledge, uh, that's why those additional materials are there. Uh, I have something here that might scare you if you're in quality. So I, I want to just spend a few minutes to make sure that you're not scared uh, because of this. Uh, the reason I put this in uh, is that for some reason, this course got earmarked as a course that quality students should take if they wanna take a security course. So it's sort of like we offer all these security courses, which is the one that you should take as a quality uh, student. And for some reason they said this course, okay? Now, I don't think that this course is any easier or harder than any other course uh, in security. So if you're in quality and you wanna take a security course, that's great. Uh, there's no reason though to prefer this course over any other particular course. And because I was getting a lot of quality uh, students that, that just thought that this was like kind of a half quality, half security course, I, I just wanted to emphasize the fact that, no, this is an actual traditional security course, okay? That said, lots of people from quality have taken the course, they've gotten A's, uh, they've done well in it, uh, so, so it's not, you know, it's not something that, that you're going to necessarily struggle with uh, because you're in quality, but it's it's not going to be, you know, easy either. Okay, so so anyways, if you're in quality and you're unsure about it, take a look through the course content and just, you know, go to lecture five or six and, and, and sort of see what level it's at. And if, if you feel that you can follow along, uh, then then that's perfectly uh, acceptable and I'm, I'm happy to have you uh, in the course. Okay, but in general, we, we will try to teach everything from kind of first principles. So I'm gonna assume you have some sort of computer science, computer engineering, software engineering, maybe electrical engineering background, uh, but you don't necessarily have specific security backgrounds. Okay, uh, let's go on to the grading scheme. Um, so uh, normally we would have two assignments. Uh, however, because this is a condensed uh, course, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll just have a single assignment uh, so the assignment is due on May 29th, uh, which is a Friday. It's due in class. And um, 
you'll submit it through EAS. So I'll have all the instructions on the assignment itself. The assignment itself I'll release uh, next week. I'll, I'll try and, um, I'll, we're going to do something new. Uh, if you want to see kind of what the assignments are like, you can look at last year's website. Uh, so it's, it's going to be similar in nature, but I'm going to pick a topic uh, that's different than the topic that we did uh, last year for assignment one. So the, the one assignment that you'll do will, will sort of be uh, like assignment one uh, from last year. Um, so, so anyway, so there will be assignment, the instructions for how to submit it and, and that kind of thing uh, will be on the assignment itself. One thing while I have your attention is uh, the system that we use is called EAS and you do have to make sure you're registered for EAS. So there is a chance that you're not uh, registered for, for some particular reason. Uh, and so it's good to, to check that before the assignments actually do so that it's not the day of and, and you're not able to submit. Uh, if the worst case thing happens, you can always email it to me, but I, I, I greatly prefer, prefer that you uh, submit it through EAS. Uh, you also receive your grades back uh, through EAS. Okay, uh, so that's the assignment. Um, when I post it uh, next week, I'll also probably record a video kind of like this where I'll, I'll go through it in more detail. Um, so, so for now, just know that, that it's something that, that you'll have to do and it's worth 10% of your mark. Okay, the next thing we'll have are, are quizzes. Uh, so the quizzes will start next week. And uh, so the office hours will be on the Wednesday and then the quizzes will do on the Friday. Uh, so they'll start every day Every Friday at three o'clock, there'll be a quiz uh, starting next week. Okay, the quiz will be on Moodle. Uh, the quiz will um, basically just be uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, there won't it won't be long. It will be like kind of like ten questions, something like that. And uh, the material that will be covered when I fill in more detail, like with the link to the quiz and all that stuff, I'll, I'll also tell you very explicitly what lectures are covered, but in general, the quiz will cover only the lectures from the previous week, okay? So this week, for example, there'll, there'll be a quiz next week. And so on that Friday, you would be kind of watching lecture four as of Friday, and you would have watched lecture three on the Wednesday uh, before Friday, but the quiz won't cover either three or four. It's only going to cover one and two, okay? So even if you're kind of like a half a week behind, uh, you'll still be able uh, to do the quizzes. And the main motivation for the quizzes is uh, I've given courses like in an online setting before. And what happens is, uh, you know, surprise, surprise, people wait till the night before the exam and they watch 12 hours of video and they don't really get it. Okay. Or, or uh, they, they wait till the final exam and, and they cram all the videos together. Okay. And so the idea of the quizzes is to sort of force you to keep up with the course material. I don't want you to be watching, uh, you know, 12 lectures on, on the last day of class, okay? Uh, you're not going to absorb the material. And uh, the course, even though it maybe when you look through the notes, it doesn't seem that dense, it, there is a lot of material there and it's a lot of different things. And so it's much better if you uh, sort of do the lectures uh, as, as we go through. And so the, the quizzes are really there to kind of force you uh, to, to watch the lectures. Uh, themselves. Okay. Uh, the quizzes will be uh, open book. Uh, so you can have your notes open. Uh, you can have whatever you want. You can search the internet for the answers. Uh, so that will tell you a bit about the quizzes, even though they're multiple choice and it's open book, it sounds easy, but they'll be very conceptual. So they'll ask you about concepts that you can't really Google. And so, um, it, you know, they're, they're really there to test whether you understood uh, the material or if, if you didn't uh, understand the material. Okay, so that's that's the sort of purpose of the quizzes themselves. All right, uh, what's next? There's also one week when your assignment is due where we won't have a quiz, so we'll skip the quiz for that week. And then the subsequent week, the quiz will cover a bit more of the material as well. Uh, oh yeah, and another thing is, uh, so I believe I haven't used Moodle before for quizzes, but I believe it just automatically marks it. So basically as soon as you're done, you'll know uh, what your mark is. They will be timed. Uh, so so 
I'll give you some amount of time. I, I, I have to work all of these details out and, and maybe we'll experiment a bit as we go through the course and, and we'll try and find a format that works. But I do expect you at a bare minimum to come online at three o'clock on Fridays uh, so that you can take this quiz. Uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll give you a generous amount of time so so that hopefully it's, it's not a case that you're, you're necessarily running out of time. Uh, and yeah, the quizzes are meant to be like kind of low stress like low key um, and mainly just to make sure that you keep up with the course and, and, that, and that you're actually understanding the material. And if, if you start slipping in terms of your marks on the quizzes, then it, it's sort of an indication that you need to uh, do more to, to sort of catch up uh, on, on the material. Okay, there will be a final exam. Uh, I don't have much to say about the final exam at this point. Uh, there's a chance that it will just be like the quizzes. It will just be a longer version of the quizzes, uh, you know, multiple choice on Moodle, um, or maybe we'll do short answer, or maybe it'll be more like a take home, uh, like like you have 24 hours to do. I really don't know. Uh, I have to think a bit about it and talk to some of the other professors and, and see what they've done. So I, I won't commit to exactly what the final exam is gonna look like in terms of format, uh, but in a couple of weeks, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say more of, about the final exam. I'll, I'll maybe post another video uh, like this and I'll, I'll tell you a bit about how to study for the exam and, and, and things like that and give you some pointers uh, about the exam itself. So actually maybe toward the end of the course, like in the last a couple of weeks before the course ends, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say more about what the final exam will look like. Uh, but for now, uh, the final exam uh, is worth 30%. Um, the uh, the other thing that we were encouraged to put in from the department is the instructor reserves the right to conduct an individual oral examination after each exam to verify the student's response to specific questions. I believe this is because it's completely, it's a free for all. You can write an exam, you know, there, there's no control over anything. You could be texting your friends and getting answers and who knows what. I, that language is there basically if there's some sort of exceptional circumstance where uh, where there's there's some evidence that someone's cheating or something like that. And because it's remote, there's there's no actual concrete evidence. That's kind of like a fallback. So I hope to never have to use this, but anyways, know that it is there and it is uh, something that, that could kick in, in in some sort of extreme circumstance. Okay, uh, the, the last component uh, will be your project so that most of your mark uh, is tied up in your project. Uh, your project is something that I'll talk about next week. So. Uh, we have enough uh, things to talk about this week and you don't have to worry about your project on day one of the course. Um, so uh, next week, I'll, I'll give you more information about the assignment itself and I'll, I'll give you more information about the project and what I'm looking for and things like that. That said, I'll, I'll say a little bit about the project. Um, so the, the essence of the project is, uh, it's, it's really an open project. So as, as long as it's, your topic is related to security because it's a security course and there's some aspect of evaluation you'll come to understand what it means to evaluate security throughout this course as long as there's some aspect of evaluation and it's about security it's basically fair game okay and so i don't care if it's like a theoretical project if you code if you do math if you read a bunch of papers and summarize them, although I'll have some guidelines about how to do that. I, I don't want an exact summary of, of existing papers. I want something a little more specific. Um, but, but anyways, you, your, your paper could have no math, no code, you know, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. It just, it, it needs to be interesting. It needs to be relevant. Uh, and, and you have to have some insight. You have to demonstrate that, that you know how to think in a way that, uh, that security professionals need to, to be able to think in, okay? Uh, and so as, as long as it has those aspects, there's really no topic that's that's sort of off topic. And uh, it's, it's a really wide open uh, kind of uh, project, okay? So uh, you shouldn't feel coming in like, oh, I'm, I'm not good at whatever. I'm not good at coding. So am I going to fail this course because I can't do coding for the final project? So it's not like that at all. Uh, whatever you're good at, you're, you're, you're obviously good at something, you're here, uh, so whatever you're good at, you'll, you'll pick that and you'll orient your project around whatever your particular skill set is. Um, so, um, so anyway, so, so I'll, I'll say more about the project uh, next week, but, but for now I just want to make sure it, it doesn't really scare you. 
And uh, if, you, if you're really, really curious, you can always look at the project description from last year. Uh, probably it will follow more or less the same thing. Uh, I, might, I might make a few tweaks and I'm still debating whether to allow group projects or, or just make them individual. And I haven't come down on a decision on that. But anyways, by next week, I'll, I'll come back to you with all those details. Okay, uh, the next part of the course outline uh, deals with uh, things like, uh, well, academic integrity. Uh, and so this is something that you probably heard explained to you for every single course uh, that you've taken. So I won't spend a whole lot of time on it, but I do want to emphasize a few things because it's, it's really important. Um, probably the biggest problem we'll have around academic integrity uh, in this course uh, has to do with plagiarism. Uh, so plagiarism is where you basically copy someone else's idea and you present it as if it's your own idea. And in particular, some to a certain extent, maybe with the assignments, uh, but the project is, is sort of the, the place where uh, we've had problems in the past uh, with plagiarism. So I want to emphasize that, um, first off, any resources that you use, first off, you, you do have to do research. You have to read what other people have written on a topic. You can't you know, you can't just make things up in your own head. Okay, so so you do have to go out and you do have to find what other people said. And in fact, if, if you don't go out and find what other people said, that's usually held against you in a research perspective, okay? So you absolutely are relying on other people's ideas and, and the things that they've written. Um, the only reason that it crosses the line into plagiarism is that you're not citing uh, or you're not referencing where you got that material from, okay? And it's perfectly acceptable in a paper to, like you could write a paper where literally every sentence has a citation, right? Like it's sort of like, okay, here's, here's an idea and here's the citation, here's the idea, here's the citation. Now, usually it's not quite at the sentence by sentence level, but you know, at a paragraph by paragraph level, it, it, it doesn't matter, you can't cite too much, okay? So don't feel that your paper looks weird uh, because you have a lot of citations, okay? Uh, you know, having papers with lots of citations is, is actually usually a, a good sign. Uh, it shows that that um, the person uh, who wrote the paper, the author, you know, took the time to, to really understand what the literature was saying on a particular topic itself. Um, okay, now one thing you absolutely cannot do is you can't take text verbatim. So say you find the perfect sentence that describes something, you copy and paste it in your document and you don't cite it, you can't do that. That is plagiarism because uh, you're presenting it as your own, right? There's no way for me to tell that that was copied and pasted unless if you cite it or, and if it's a direct quote, you should also put it in quotation marks. Direct quotes are weird, like almost no paper, unless if you're criticizing how they said something, it's very, very rare for a security paper, like an academic paper to have a direct quotation in it. Uh, usually what happens is you rephrase the ideas uh, in the paper and then you cite uh, the paper for, for giving you that particular idea. Another thing that, that sometimes people think isn't plagiarism but is, is what if you copy and paste a sentence and then you change the grammar or you change a couple of the words uh, so that, the, you know, for words that have the same meaning but, the, but it's actually a different word. That, in, that is still plagiarism. You're still taking someone's idea, the exact logical flow of their sentence uh, and you're just, you're basically just swapping out words, okay? Um, and so that, that's a sentence that you couldn't have written if you hadn't copied and pasted it. It's not something that, that came out of your own head. It was just you tweaking what someone else did or kind of obfuscating what they did, okay? So that's still a case of plagiarism. So my general advice to you is uh, if, if you want to reference other people's works, well, you will be doing that. So the best way to do it is read the other work understand it, maybe take some notes. And then when it comes time for you to write about it, just like get rid of the document, like close it down, don't have it sitting in front of you, and then just write it from memory. You know, what, what do you remember about the ideas itself? What were the concepts? And, and write it in your own words, then cite, oh, by the way, I got the ideas from, from this paper. Okay, citations also, they don't have to be formal. I don't care about like the format of the citations or anything like that, okay? There's no marks in, in, in terms of that. If I can find what you're talking about from the citation, then, then it's cited well enough, okay? And it's also, you can also use a very conversational style. Uh, so you can be like, um, you know, so-and-so says this in this paper. 
kind of thing. So you don't you don't have to be very formal about it. Or you know, uh, there there's four really good. You know, if you're studying this particular area, there's four properties as pointed out by so and so, right? And then you put the citation in, and then you list the four properties, and then they can be the exact same four uh, properties that that particular person indicated. Okay. Uh, so anyways, if you have questions about this, come ask me. It's very serious. You don't want an academic offense. Uh, if, if you have two academic offenses, you, you could actually get expelled uh, from the university. The university takes it very, very seriously. And so uh, it's, it's just um, uh, you, you, you want to be very careful. Okay. Uh, other forms of uh, plagiarism or academic offenses is... Uh, you can't copy someone else's project. Uh, so if you have a friend that took this course uh, last term, you can't submit their project as your own project. Um, you can't even resubmit a project that you, like maybe you wrote a project in 6120 or 6130 and you're like, uh, well, that that's a security project and this is a security course, I'll just submit it uh, to this course as well. So uh, you have to use a fresh project. Okay, so we want uh, something that's brand new. That said, you can build on things that you've already learned, okay? So if you're a research student, like a, a master's or PhD student, you have your research, do your project on your research. You already know that area, uh, and so it, it's beneficial. Similarly, if you've taken courses in the past and, and you really liked uh, some of the stuff that you worked on in other courses, you already have a head start in that area. And so it makes sense to do a project that's related to it, where you can leverage that past uh, research that you have done or, or that past knowledge that you've gained. Okay. So it, it will actually make a better project if you, if you draw on the things that you already know. Uh, the, the only restriction is you can't like literally, you know, submit the same project or a project with the exact same contribution uh, that, that you've used uh, for another course. Um, yeah. And so, and so that's it. Uh, in terms of uh, exams, you know, the exams are weird this year because everything's online. And as you know, nothing is police. Uh, and so, you know, and uh, as a result of that, what I'm doing to, to counteract that is really just re trying to re uh, uh, to, to do the exam in a way uh, that makes it hard to cheat on. So, so for example, it's open book. So I, I can't stop you from, from Googling things. And so I'll just build that into the exam. I'll assume that you are Googling things uh, and then it's perfectly valid. Uh, for it. In past years, I've always given people a cheat sheet so that you can write whatever you want on it. It's one page, you can bring it in. This year, uh, you know, and the reason I limited it to one page was just because I don't want people, f you know, thumbing through notes uh, in the middle of the exam because it's very distracting for the people around you. Uh, but this year, you'll be writing the exam from your house. And so it doesn't really matter uh, how noisy you are, you know, thumbing through things and, and things like that. And so you, you can access whatever you want uh during the exams and, and and yeah okay uh so that's about it for academic integrity um there's a bunch of links here uh, if you need support uh in in whether it's research or if it's related to mental health or anything like that uh there's a bunch of uh, services that concordia offers uh, most of these services are still operating uh, despite the fact that the university is closed, I think all of them, uh, you can, uh, you know, it might be better to email than, than to phone, uh, but, but uh, you can definitely reach out uh, to these different uh, services as you need them. Uh, and uh, they should be available to you despite the fact that the university is closed. Okay, so that's it uh, for the course outline. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to cover. Um, and I don't think there is anything in particular. You, you can really see the, the full layout uh, of the course. Um, you'll note, uh, for example, in the very last week of the courses, of the course, uh, the Wednesday there is a class. Of course, we don't have classes because they're online, uh, but we won't do a, a lecture for that last week. Uh, and then your project uh, will be due the very last day of class. And you can submit that also through EAS, which you'll use uh, for submitting your assignment. And the final exams are scheduled sometime between June 18th and the 23rd. I don't pick the date, the department picks the date, so I have no control over that. Uh, if you probably, given the circumstances, you aren't going to be going on vacation or anything like that. But anyways, you, you do want to keep that entire period 
free and available because the exam could come on any one of those days, at least until the uh, university announces the actual day. Uh, and, the, and then you can, um, you can choose the actual day itself. Okay, so I think that's it uh, for, for today. And so, um, yeah, so just jump into the lectures. I, I hope you enjoy them. And uh, if you have questions, you can stop by uh, on any Wednesday and uh, we'll, we'll do the office hours. So I hope to see some of you then. And uh, for the rest of you, uh, enjoy the course and, and good luck.